Let me read a little story to you. And at the end of each uh, parts of these, we, we, uh, or, the, or the beginning of it, we go into this. Let's start the scenario of an automax trained automobile salesperson, who will pick a man, pursuing his career, living his life in the most effective way that he can. In scene one, George and Nadine and their teenage son are sitting at the breakfast table together. And the conversation turns to the fact that the son needs a car now. Nadine would like to give him hers because it's reliable and would fit his needs, but then she would need a new one. So she asks her husband how his sales are going at the dealership. Can you guys see that happening? Yes or no? Or vice versa for the ladies in the room? Uh, at the dealership at which he works, how many units he sold, what are his commissions like and bonuses, etc. He responds without really thinking about it that floor traffic's down, can't get anyone in the showroom, there's lots of tire kickers, people don't seem to be able to make a decision, the economy is down, and so on. She responds with a very pointed question, well what can you do to change that? A little later, as George was driving to work, he thinks about how he is approaching his customers at the dealership, and here's how it's done. Okay, then that's a real world scenario, right? You guys are gonna start doing that, you know, traffic's down, blah, 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 economy's down, economy's down. When's the copyright on this? 2007. Right, economy's down. Right? I don't know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> right? Nothing. What's coming? Right? 17 million. Yeah, no clue. Try it. We want to approach every, cut, every client that walks on the lot in an enthusiastic manner, right? We earlier today read a quote by Dale Carnegie, Carnegie that said what? To be enthusiastic, you have to what? Act enthusiastic, right? So on the way to work in the morning, I don't care if you guys got to do this or not, and if you, if you have to, it's no big deal. I mean, you, you've all sung in the car, in the, to the car radio, right? Yeah. And we've all done that. Right, and we've all been sitting at a light, right? She does it all the time, sitting at a light, and she's singing, and she got a great voice. <laughs> and she's singing, right, and somebody looks over, and, you know, and they're laughing at you. Right, that ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. Right, so, uh, instead of doing that, on the way to work in the morning, why don't you say to yourself this, today, to be enthusiastic, I'm gonna act enthusiastic. Because then when you get to work, you act as a person of what? Enthusiastic. enthusiastic. Fake it till you make it. Right? You are who you think you are, Confucius said. Right? Now, I'm not talking about jetting around a place like a circus clown, but I'm talking about not this stuff, dragging around the store. Can I help you? How many times have you walked in an automobile dealership, see three salespeople standing in a circle out front of the dealership in the car business? We now call that a dope ring. D O P E. You got three salesmen. Dope ring, get it? With a cup of coffee, a cigarette, like in this posture, right? And you walk in. You're there to, you know, this is a big decision as a client, is it not? You bet it is. You're spending two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars a month. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. It's a big deal. So when I'm in a dealership, I'm standing tall. If I'm six one, I'm going to look six one. I'm not going to look five eight. Right? There's a big difference, is there not? So I want to be on my toes, I want to be enthusiastic in my mannerisms, in my attitude. How quickly do we want to get to those, those clients? How quickly do we want to get to those clients? Have you ever felt or heard about, you know, man, those car guys, watch out for the car dealerships, they jump out of the bushes at you, right? Remember earlier today I did that Joe Jurassic, that dinosaur thing when I got in your face that, you know, and jumped out at you kind of thing, right? That's no good, right? No, that's not good. Have you also ever walked into any kind of retail business and been totally ignored? Has that ever happened to any of you? Sure, yeah. yeah. Right? And you got to go look for somebody to take care of you? Let me just assure you of one thing. If I'm a real buyer, a real potential client looking to buy a car at a car dealership, I am not going to take my time, I'm not going to walk into a place and go have to seek you out to spend my four, five, six, seven hundred a month or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars. I ain't coming to look for you. You better greet me, approach me, approach me promptly and professionally. 
Well, what's a prompt greeting, Craig? Give us a time frame. Well, One, two, three minutes, max. Right? You don't want to jump in their face, right? But, you know, I worked at a dealership years ago, the huge dealership on the east side of Cleveland, Ohio. And I mean, I'm talking about 18 acres of blacktop. And in August, that blacktop got what? Hot. Hot. You know, you're used to Lake Erie, man, and that humidity in, the, in, in 98 degrees, it hit that blacktop. And I'm telling you, it was like, it was horrible. It was like 400 degrees out there. And so I go out there and, and you know, like, and we worked on what was called an up system where we actually took turns for the customer. So it'd be my turn, right? And I'm like, you know, and I'm like the only one that was under 100 years old working there. You know? <laughs> I'm like 27 and everyone else is 140 years old. Only kidding. Now that I look back on it, they were pretty young people. As I got older, Excuse I found out. So then, it, so then, uh, Excuse me. Yeah, so, uh, right, so I'm, so I'm at the dealership, right, and I go to take care of these people. There's these people that are probably, I don't know, in their 60s out there. I get up, the salesman next to me grabs me and says, now, well, hold on a minute. I said, well, there's some customers out there. They said, nah, let them wilt out there for a minute. Let them get a little hot. I said, are you serious? Yeah, we let, them, we let them stick to the blacktop a little bit. <laughs> right, and then we go get them. Come on. You know, that's horror. That, I mean, that's no way to treat a human being. Is that dead at midnight? No. <laughs> you could give them heat stroke and you could literally be dead at midnight. So we don't want to do that. We want to get, we want to get them a prompt greeting, right? But we don't want to jump on a customer. We don't want to greet them and invade their personal body space. This is too close. Got any Seinfeld freaks in here? Right? Close, close yeah. talker. Close talker? We don't want to be close talkers, right? Because what, what's that going to do with a person? What's the client going to do? Physically move back on us. That's not the kind of relationship that you want. So you don't want to invade their personal body space. When you're originally a customer, from six to eight feet away, that's when you're going to greet them. Welcome to ABC Motors. Six to eight feet away. Right? You're not going to get up in their grill, so to speak. A smile, a big sincere smile. Now I'm not talking about Jack Nicholson as the Joker type of smile. I'm talking about a nice smile. No one wants to do business with an old grouch, so turn that frown upside down. All right, those of you from Cleveland, Ohio, a guy by the name of Captain Penny used to say that. So, firm professional handshake. Firm professional handshake. Shake my hand. Right? A firm professional handshake. You do not shake a person's hands like this. We're not in Paris, France. Right? You don't shake a person's hands like that, then who has the upper hand? They do. You don't shake their hand like this, then you're an upper handed car salesman. Right? Put your hand into their hand. Do any of you suffer from what I call wet hand? When you get nervous, your hand gets a little damp. Right? Some people in the world will like that. If that bothers, if you have that thing, it doesn't make you a bad person. Carry uh, tissues or a handkerchief, put it in your pocket, give it a squeeze, and then shake somebody's hand. Get the moisture off your hand. You'll have that, trainers, in your class. You'll have some people with that. No sunglasses. No sunglasses. I know you guys spent $8 billion on your Ray-Bans and your, what, what else we got, Oakleys and everything else, all right? And they're hot. They're sharp. They're really great looking. Wear them on weekends. You know, wear them into the club at 1 o'clock in the morning, okay? Don't wear them here. Yeah, but Craig, I saw all those guys. Yeah, that's right. You did see all those guys wearing them. How did it look? Right? And I, at this point, trainers, I might put on some glasses and have somebody stand up and give them the ones over. What am I looking at? Can't tell because I got them dark sunglasses on. It's a bad thing. It's very bad. 